welcome to this first video in the Q Study 3 Science Electromagnets topic and in this one we're going to look at circuits and symbols. Now circuit symbols they're used to draw diagrams of electrical circuits okay it's a very particular way of doing it and we use straight lines to show the wires that connect the components together. Okay so first of all let's have a look at some of the more common circuit symbols used. So here is a switch. The switch here is in the open position. This is open. If we pull all this down to there, that's a switch in the closed position. So that's a symbol for a switch. Here we have a symbol for a cell. So we've got one longer line, that's this one here, which is the positive electrode, and a shorter one, negative electrode. Now it's important you realize this is a cell. Don't confuse this with a battery. When we're talking about a battery, we're talking about several cells joined together. So here we've got um, two cells joined together to make a battery. So this is the symbol here for a battery. This is a symbol for a lamp. You might call it um, a bulb. Either doesn't matter. This is the symbol no matter which way you call it. So it's a circle with a cross in the middle. That's the symbol for a lamp or bulb. This is um, a very easy symbol. This is the symbol for what's called an ammeter. Now an ammeter is a meter that measures the current in a circuit. Look at this in a later video. Similarly, a simple one is a symbol for a voltmeter, a circle with a V in it. And this measures the voltage or what we call potential difference in a circuit. This is a symbol for resistor. Very simple, it's a rectangle. Now what a resistor does, it limits the flow of electrons in the circuit. It slows them down, it resists their flow. This is the symbol for resistor. You can go one stage further and if you put a, an arrow like this through it, it becomes a symbol for a variable resistor. And this is a resistor that we can change the value of. If at home you've got um, a dimmer switch on your light, for example, that is a variable resistor. And lastly, this is a symbol for a motor. So it's a circle with M in it. And what a motor does, it converts electrical energy into movement or kinetic energy. So it could, for example, be in a hairdryer or a food mixer. That's a motor. Now, suppose you want to build a circuit. And the circuit's going to have in it um, a cell. Remember, that's a cell, not a battery. It's a cell and a switch and a lamp. Now, if you were to build it, and draw it, this is what it might look like. However, that is not how we draw a circuit diagram. In a circuit diagram, you've got to have the right symbols. So when we draw a circuit diagram, you need the correct symbols. Here we got uh, the cell, there we've got the switch, and there we got the lamp or the bulb. And notice we join them with straight lines. The straight lines represent the wires. You must always have straight lines. Let's just go back a second. So there is the drawing you might make of it, but when you're drawing a circuit diagram, this is how it must look. Okay, So just remember, when drawing a circuit diagram, use the correct symbols for electrical components. A component is anything in the circuit. A component could be ammeter, lamp, cell, whatever. So use the correct symbols for electrical components, and then use straight lines for the wires to join the components together. Now we need a couple of um, key words here. So a component, electrical component, it's items such as lamps and resistors that are used in circuits. And electric circuit shows components and wires through which electrons flow. It's important you start keeping a record somewhere of these keywords. So I suggest you start yourself a vocabulary sheet and copy these keywords onto it. Right, that's the end of this um, short video on circuits and symbols, so thanks for watching. If you like what you see and you want to see more um, videos in the Electromagnets series or any other Key Stage 3 topic, then please copy and paste this URL here into your um, computer, into your website, wherever you're working from, your browser I should say, and then have a look at the Key Stage 3 Science Complete Video Course. And if you're interested, you can subscribe to that and get monthly updates on the Key Stage 3 videos. Okay, so once again, thanks for watching and listening, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.